Hey guys, this is Sergey Glaukos from SergeyGlaukos.com. Today I'm here with Gerard de la Porta, also known as Mr. Romance all around the world in the marketing world. So today we're gonna do a little walk, walk with the experts. Gerard is gonna talk about his recent projects, his life, what he's been doing all, all the last couple of decades in the, in the marketing, marketing industry. And uh, let's just start walking. That's it. Gerard, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where do you come from? How you came into this industry? What, like, what's your story? Yeah, so I'm from the United States, um, the state of Florida near Miami. And um, I got into the internet space uh, just over 15 years ago, actually. Um, I actually went to college for marketing. And when I got to college, I was more in the uh, corporate world. My last role before internet marketing, I worked for a company out of Wall Street, and I basically represented their family mutual funds uh, and wine and dine stockbrokers. Um, took them out and got them to know our family of funds, and then built relationships and got them to do business uh, with us. So. That's actually my background, marketing and in the financial uh, service space. Mm. Um, after around uh, December or August of 2002, I went to my first internet show uh, in Florida with uh, my best friend at the time. It was actually an adult internet show. Um, and I was like over overwhelmed by pulling up to this uh, hotel that was on the beach and I thought that um, I was doing pretty well at the time and had a nice car, I was wearing a nice suit and shoes and mm -hmm. I got there and everyone's pulling up in Ferraris and Porsches and all iced out Rolexes and basically dressed like we are. And at that point I realized... Listen, let's go the other way around. Yeah, yeah. There's, uh, yeah, there's no way here. At that point, I realized I said to myself, I'm in the wrong business. I need to <laughs> get into this internet marketing space. And a few, that was August 2003, 2002. And in January of uh, 2003, um, the United States uh, went, went back to, to war and people weren't investing in, the, um, in mutual funds anymore. Everybody was really nervous about the state of things. And, and my best friend, um, knew that I had recently also gone through a divorce and he's like why don't you move up to California and get in my email spam business which I, I had no idea <laughs> really I knew what emails were but I didn't understand what what spamming was or he said yeah we'll be affiliates and at the time I was like okay great so he said you know move out here and you invest in some of these things called servers which I didn't know what those were and then um, we'll send uh, email traffic as affiliates and at the time we were sending to um, online offers that were you know for RX for a pharmacy so it took off we were doing really well and basically I got hooked on the internet because I realized coming from a corporate world where all of my business was done belly to belly I realized that I could actually make money while I sleep in multiple time zones, um, multiple currencies, and it was just very interesting. And it was, I'm still taken back by it today that we all can work on a laptop from anywhere and, and we sell products and services around the world and we never meet the people that actually buy them. And it, it really is limitless. What year was that when you started? That was uh, 2003. Ooh. So April 2003. It was actually like April 1st, 2003. I drove out to California um, and started to, you know, get into this thing called email marketing, which I didn't know anything about. But it was just so interesting. I, I, I thought that all I had to do was buy more of these things called servers and get more of these things called emails. And, and then, um, you know, I'd be retired real soon. But then, you know, things change quick in our business. And, Let's walk this way. Yeah, and that was that was one of my first that my first first business I got into uh, did well. So there was some luck and some timing. But then also, 
in a, sh a period of time after we were doing really well, uh, in 2004, this can, can spam law came into effect in the United States and it essentially just changed the business overnight. None of the co-locations um, were allowing us to keep our servers there. I was getting calls every week. Gerard, you got to come get your servers. You got to move your servers, and so we, we, you know, made a small fortune and wisely invested it in Vegas, and <laughs> the rest we wasted. And um, we woke up one day and we just couldn't land mail. It just changed real fast. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think that's something important that I know that's happened to all of us. That, uh, if you're new in the business, definitely be prepared for things to end. And of course, people that have been around for a while have experienced situations like this. Uh, but that this is one of the, the many businesses that did well and that stopped. So this industry definitely is fast paced and, and we all can make a lot of money in it. But it, whatever you're doing today, it definitely is, is gonna end or it's gonna reduce. Uh, and, the amount of money you can make from it. Mm, what did you do after the whole mailing thing? Like, what, um, you, what was your focus? After the mailing thing, I got more involved actually in adult internet. And um, I was with a billing company based out of, of LA that was one of the largest uh, third party processors for um, adult websites. and. When I started to work there, I noticed that a lot of these companies were contacting the billing company that were not from the United States. And they were all looking to get corporate structures and they wanted to get websites, you know, in English and they wanted to be part of the American uh, market space. So it was interesting because at the time, the other people that were working at the company, they they were all like, I don't want those leads. I, I don't want those leads unless they're US leads. So I'm like, dude, give me those leads. I'll, I'll work those. So I started realizing you know, real fast that all these companies not only wanted uh, a presence in the US with, you know, in, the, in the online adult space, but they were looking for someone to help market them. And so um, long story short, I wanted this one company came in from uh, from Uruguay and the owner was a real sharp young kid um, at the time he was 18 and he kept telling me that um, you know he had you know hundreds of employees and he's looking you probably should turn around with that oh yeah motor maybe let's go back yeah let's go back wait So he told me he wanted to um, enter the U.S. market space. He's looking for someone to help him to represent him at all the shows. And I went down the Uruguay, and everything he said was was true. I mean, they had hundreds of employees, and they were number one in other markets in Europe and South America. So we built a, a program called uh, SpotCash.com, and from like 2004 to 2008, uh, I was part of that group uh, traveling around the world to uh, adult internet shows and we were the first company online in the US that also had the sites translated and, and local billing in eight other languages oh, so yeah. it was something that was interesting and from my recollection I was probably the first who ever uh, was part of a international team that wasn't just focused in the US because at the time you know, all the Europeans, you know, stayed in their local markets and uh, South Americans in their local markets. Let's and cross here. Oh, so yeah. it's there. Okay, so. continue. Oh, yeah. So then I, I stayed in the adult internet space basically until uh, December of uh, 2012. And at that point, um, another one of my friends from the adult internet space, uh, wanted to get into uh, uh, Nutra, which I, had, I didn't know anything about. And so we got into the adult, I mean the uh, Nutra space in 2012, December. And then we started to, uh, I went to the first Affiliate Summit West show and 
at that show, I realized it was way larger than adults. An adult within one year, I met everybody just by going to shows in a smaller industry. Mm -hmm. But I realized that non-adults was larger. And even if there was an affiliate summit show every month, there's just no humanly way possible I can meet people. So I started using Facebook, um, eventually added you and <laughs> 5,000 other people, and got to know different people. Um, did very well in the Nutrispace, 13 through uh, 16. Um, and for different reasons got out of it but that was a great learning experience and um, you've got to know a, a lot of people as well like during that time so mm -hmm. um, some people would not know what Nutra is can you explain that quickly yeah Nutra are you know supplements for you know diet weight loss uh, muscle weight gain uh, or testosterone for example um, or there are skin products as well, you know, which would be lotions and creams and stuff like that. So we focus mainly on the United States and mainly on weight loss. What was your biggest learning from, from that period when you focused on Nutra? Um, God, the biggest learning was, once again, things end. Mm -hmm. um, I won't go into the details of why this ended, But I will remind you all again that everything will end, sometimes for the wildest reasons that make zero sense. <laughs> um, so it was one of those situations again where things ended. And um, however, that was the biggest amount of sales I did. During the, those years, we were online for 20 months and I did more business in that period of time than I had combined and everything else I did since I got in the internet in 2003. Mm -hmm. So I learned then that, you know, mainstream, of course, is, is, is larger than, than adult. Adult is still huge, there's still money there, but there's a lot of things that change in adults um, that um, made the sales change and the, the whole business model change. But, but in general, I, I think the, everything I learned was that mainstream is huge, um, so. And what did you do after? Um, after that period of time, <clears throat> I uh, primarily brokered products for different advertisers, also represented uh, different networks, um, also um, still broker products that surround affiliates, different things that they need to run their daily business, and then also um, broker products around advertisers that they need to run their business. And then during that period, In 12, 2012, when I got into the internet, my Facebook is kind of entertaining. I was able to meet a lot of other affiliates, advertisers, networks in mainstream, in, in non-adult. Um, and Facebook's a very powerful tool. It's not only did tens and tens of millions in sales for me, but it's also a, a powerful personal marketing tool that helps us all stay together Mm -hmm. even if we're in the middle of Romania. <laughs> yeah, that's where we are, by the way. We yeah. are, Gerard is co-hosting a line of events called The Bashes. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah, in last year, uh, 2000, December of 2017, I hosted uh, the first bash in Bangkok which is my crown jewel, and that's also because I, I live in Bangkok. Um, you know, and it was just, um, it was just something interesting and in a way to... Let's go over we, there. Yeah, definitely. That is a narrow path. Let's go back this way. Um, the idea behind it was to have a fun event yep. and a great networking event. I mean, everything I do is, is designed to help everybody do business, of course, me included. Um, so that event was awesome. I mean, um, we had um, a great venue, um, local models, and everybody that attended um, had a great time. So, so you've had the Bangkok Bash, yes. Panama Bash, Yes. And now we're here in Bucharest. Yeah, with, with, with the Bucharest Bash. 
So maybe a little a little shout out to Gleis yes, for co-hosting that event. Yeah, I'm just a celebrity showing up. They've organized everything and it'll be a great event. And again, it's the primary focus of the event, our business and to have a good time. So that's it's really about that. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about uh, your story. Why you moved to Bangkok? How did that happen? Why do you live in Bangkok? Um, in 2012, October, uh, October 8th, I moved to Manila to be part of the Nutra operation. And at the time, coming from America, where I lived in Florida, I mean, Asia is, is a long way. And most people in that part of the US travel to Europe for, for vacations or maybe somewhere else in America, the Bahamas, the Caribbean, or Mexico. It's just a long distance to Asia. So I honestly didn't know much about Asia. And I didn't think that it was somewhere that I, I ever wanted to go because I, I, was, I was naive, honestly. I moved to Manila and I just fell in love with the people there. And I, I've been training Muay Thai at that point for like, but when I moved there, I was actually training Muay Thai only six months. And I, and I got a Muay Thai trainer there, and then I didn't even know that Muay Thai was from Thailand. <laughs> and he's like, bro, we should go to Bangkok. I'm like, all right. So 2013, December 23rd, I went to Bangkok for the first time and just fell in love with, um, well, number one, I could train Muay Thai anywhere. Number two, just fell in love with the people, the culture, um, they're, the magistry, it's its just a beautiful, to me it's heaven on earth, but I love Thailand. I, and at the time, now this is the 41st country I've been to. Um, at the time I was living in Manila, that was the third country I, I lived in. And then Bangkok, I was like, I'm going to move here. So I finally did January 26th of 2016. And now I've been there for like two and a half years going on three. Um, the food's great. It's a it's a super modern city. Great highways, great airports, and it's actually the best place I feel like to be for business. There's a lot of affiliates. There's some networks there, um, and then there's a large show in December, and literally weekly people come through Bangkok, and I I try to meet with everybody, or at least give them some information that I have on restaurants and places to go, but it's just a, a high standard of living at, at a lower cost combined with a modern, safe environment and just people with hearts of gold. So that's pretty much why I live in Thailand. Mm, it's beautiful. That's also where we met for the yeah, first time. Exactly. I think w me and my business partner, we moved to Bangkok around about the same time. Yeah. And you're also wearing the GDP shirt. Yes. Which is also somehow related to Thailand. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. I'm I just, zoom in a little bit. Um, I was heading to Europe last year and I've been to Europe before and everybody always has like a coat of arms. So I decided to make my own. But I'm really big on just enjoying life and enjoying the ride of life. So I call it GDP life enjoyment. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, go so ahead. these tigers represent, I'm gonna go over the whole thing. My bodyguards in Bangkok. This means that I ride tigers. This crown means I live like a king. Uh, this means I love my mother and romance and I ride elephants and these flowers represent beauty. So I just made this and I put it on all my shirts and hats and I don't know, it's just something fun. I mean, life is short. I'm, I'm really a professional at enjoying the ride of life and it's gonna end. Life gives you everything that it takes it all away. Whether you just mentioned you just mentioned oh, romance. You're also known in our world as Mr. Romance. Can you can you explain why that is? All right, so that was a given name to me by my friend Eric, who uh, operates an adult forum called GFY, also known as GoFuckYourself.com. It was <laughs> for the porn world. And when we would go to the adult internet shows, every day we. would you know, I'll get together and I'd be like, hey, how was last night? Did you get any romance? Did you get any romance? <laughs> um, you know, I just, it's just my term of like meeting someone special and... No, no. 
They usually stop here. Oh, yeah, well, I, I usually don't want to trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, I don't. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was actually a given name, and it's because I used the term a lot. So, it just kind of stuck. So, that's kind of where that came from. Well, nice. That is. Nice. How do you use Facebook for, for business? You know, again, Facebook not only did tens and tens of millions of sales for me, because my pubs that ran our Nutra um, used that platform. Um, but it's basically the modern day Rolodex, which a lot of you may not be, remember that device, but it was a physical device that was alphabetized, and you'd put people's business cards in there, and you could roll through it and find your contacts. Well. You know, I, 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 again, I was in the financial, you know, planning business, and we used to also keep our clients, like a card of each person, in, you know, alphabetized and and also based through the uh, uh, whose birthday was coming up. We would we we we'd write them on their birthday. We'd call them, and and it was just a way to say hi to people. So I never was into social media. Uh, actually, I never did MySpace. Um, and I, and I, I wasn't even, I didn't even know what Facebook was, but what happened was, was an adult I had, again, went to all the shows in one year, met everybody, and um, we had something in adult that my friends at Mr. Skin built called Adults Who's Who, which looking back now is just something that was actually a Facebook. Everyone had a profile, it was only for the adult space. Everyone could put their, their information on, who they are, what company they were with or owned, and, and like a bio about yourself. So that was closed down in like 2008. And then I was moving back to the United States as I was living in Uruguay, and then people started hitting me up for this thing called Facebook. All my you know, friends from adult, and I was like, well, I guess I'll, I don't know what this is, but I'll sign up for it, because everyone's asking. And, and, and so I got on Facebook because of business. And I really didn't use it a lot in 2000. 2008 to 2012. Hello, Brian. Oh, Brian, what's up, bro? What's going on? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> yes. Look who we I had no idea who I just would run into. <laughs> yes, <once again>. randomly. <laughs> so, I'm about to go see uh, Vlad, I think, at a restaurant. All right. All right. Uh, Enjoy. I guess I'll be catching up with you later. Yeah. See you tonight. Right. We'll continue with our interview. Yeah, definitely. No worries. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I got on that thing called Facebook, and right. we start, I start. I didn't use it a lot in adult because I already knew everybody. Again, fast forward to 2012, I realized that I could use this thing called Facebook as a tool to meet people. Mm -hmm. So I started adding network owners, I started adding their sales reps, I started adding mutual friends of those people. I'd see people at internet shows online and start adding people. And, you know, I, 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 I'm me, I'm a 47 year old bachelor and I, I live a bachelor life, so I, I also shared a piece of my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But, um, to meet people, I mean, Facebook is marketing. I think all of us know that. And it is just a genius tool that can help you meet people, stay on people's minds, you know, from wherever you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And we're in a unique industry where if you work for a company, the company wants you to be on Facebook, and you should, because we have private Facebook groups. Um, we use it for invites, uh, for industry meetups or industry shows. Um, so it's just, it's uh, very powerful. Now, not everyone can put naked Asians in their windows <laughs> like I did, <laughs> which just... I did it for four and a half years, and I don't know how I got away with it so long, but then finally, last August, it, um, I got banned once for three days, and then like the next week, I put up another, you know, another <laughs> romance, and then what happened was, um, I got banned again for seven days, so I'm like, all right, that's it, I'm stopping, because I, I, I need my Facebook. I mean, it's it's a powerful tool. So I'm sorry my Facebook is more boring now, but um, uh, <laughs> maybe you can so, ask Zuckerberg. So this is why Gerard is not putting up pictures of women. Romances, yeah. Of romances really anymore. It's really sad. I'm an artist. That's window art. But <laughs> window art. Yeah. This is actually how, I'm, how I got introduced to you. Somebody said, hey, you need to follow this guy, Mr. Romance. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's putting up photos of, of women. Yeah. And, uh, so. and that's how I just sent a friend request yeah. randomly. Yeah. <laughs> but I uh, pride myself and I always stayed on the, um, the classy side of trashy. So. Uh -huh. yeah. Now, a little bit different question thinking yeah. thinking back all your business life yeah um, 
Well, were there any like or maybe share one big failure or something where you learned something from? Yeah. I've had so many failures, man. Sometimes I feel like walk here. I almost feel like I probably have tried thousands of things and failed at about 98% of them. I mean, the internet's hard. I mean, if anyone says it's not, they're lying to you. But if you if, if you work at it, eventually you'll have what I feel is important is your luck and your timing where all of a sudden you're just in the right place at the right time with the right products or services that either you represent or that you've built. But, um, you know, the biggest thing I've learned is that it, um, things will end and you have to prepare for that. Keep your personal overhead down as low as you can through tax minimization and, and then also keep down your, your uh, corporate overhead. And I know a lot of people um, live in uh, countries other than theirs to minimize their personal taxes and corporate taxes. There's a lot of strategies you can use. Um, we're, we're able to outsource in different parts of the world to not only get maybe a better cost on uh, an employee that we need, but the, but also sometimes you get you get better service even though you're paying potentially a lower rate. Um, yeah, that's like the biggest thing. Pick your partners wisely. Be prepared to get fucked, and keep your expenses low. That's like the best advice I could give anybody. Um, mm -hmm. I have no regrets. I have lived a very colorful life and I don't regret anything. But as I um, go on in my career, actually every week I try to find ways to minimize those costs. You know, whether it's living, travel, um, corporate expenses as well. Um, really watch, you know, everywhere you can in order to, to last because this is not a marathon you're gonna have some sprints I've had a lot of sprints and they've been great but then you're back down to the long marathon and waiting for the next you know project to hit so it's definitely uh, that would be the most important things I can share with people is just watch your overhead mm -hmm. um. Now we just talked about how you use Facebook and everything. Right. Um, what's your What's your current project that yeah. you are focusing on? Right. So the the um, there are many of them, but I think the, the best one I could share right now is MarketHub.com, uh, which uh, I'm one of the co-founders. And the reason that we we built MarketHub, one of them was that we we felt that we potentially could build an improved uh, offer listing site for networks to showcase their offers. Um, but we wanted to be more than just an offer listing site. So we created a new site to begin with. And we've got um, an incredible writer and we're trying to write stories that are relevant to both advertisers and publishers. Um, then in addition to those type of stories, um, any any networks or non-networks that advertise with us, we wanted to be able to use the new site portion of the site to help showcase their offices, who they are, what they are, where they're located, to be able to tell more of their story. Because again, we're all spread all over the you know the world, and um, we're also spread out over the internet in our in our domain, or we're spread out over Facebook or Facebook groups. There's only like no one place where people, someone can go, whether you're new or whether, you know, you're a company that's been around for a while and you want to learn more about someone's company or product or service. So we've got our offer listings portion coming out. Before that, we built our, fa our powerful Facebook group. Now, I personally added like thousands of my top Facebook contacts from affiliates. Most of those are pubs and affiliates to, um, you know, people in the industry, uh, from network owners, you know, um, network uh, sales managers, to people that own software companies, people that own billing companies. So it's like the who's who inside of our Facebook group, which is part of the whole Market Hub brand, the new site, the Facebook group. Uh, and then now we're launching our offer listing site for networks. And then inside of our offer listing site, we're also trying to minimize fraud. So some of the um, notorious countries we've actually- Go back slowly. Yeah. Some notorious countries we've actually blocked. And then we're making everybody sign up to the network offer listing site. Um, 
and we'll actually review those people, contact them if we don't know them to minimize uh, affiliate fraud on the platform. And, and inside of our um, offer listing site, we also have a unique chat box, which is like, you know, chatting like you would on Facebook. And we've, we've categorized each of the boxes by product niche from, you know, casino to neutral to binary. Um, and that way an affiliate can go inside and, and hit up that chat box and say, hey, I'm looking for crypto offers. And any of the advertisers, meaning um, networks that are advertising with us or non-networks that are advertising with us from CRM companies, you know, whatever, they can respond to those chats and try to help those affiliates get what they need. So then the other piece that's coming out, that's uh, next, uh, the offer listing will launch uh, probably the beginning of next week at the latest. We'll also have a um, network uh, directory that'll list each network. That way, that way someone can click on a network, learn a little bit more about them, where they're from. Um, we're also going to build something called the industry. Now, the industry section of the site will actually list every business um, category in our space, from processors for uh, credit card processing to uh, software companies from affiliate tracking software to um, CRM software to network tracking software or from anything else that's from legal help to um, help with um, getting jobs from recruiters. So you'll be able to go inside the industry, inside a market hub and find literally everything you want because I did this because people contact me daily asking me, oh, are you hiring? Or, hey, I need to get a corporate structure outside the US. Do you know any lawyers? Or, you know, I'm an affiliate. I'm thinking of becoming a network. Which network tracking software should I use? So I realized like I was a directory and I realized that there was a gap in the space that there's nowhere you can get all this information. So the goal of, of the industry part of Market Hub is to have you know, a place where you can go, whether you're a veteran or whether you're someone new, and you want to find out more information about different companies for the products or services that you need. Sounds like an amazing project, really. Yeah. You want to uh, do a shout out to any of the networks out there that you work with? You know, of course, Glyze at this point, because we're all here, I'm, I'm meeting with you again. Uh, we've been in Bangkok, but we're doing this interview because of them. Um, I've also met up with uh, Bitter Strawberry. They're here uh, in Romania as well. There's some other networks that are coming uh, uh, to the to the Glides, Bucharest Bash as well. Uh, Crypto Partners. And there's just there's just so many of them out there. Um, but yeah, I think that's them plus anyone else I didn't mention. <laughs> um. Is there a website or something where people can find that? Um, well, markethub.com. And it's actually spelled M-R-K-T-H-U-B.com. So the link will be provided under the video. Yeah. Um, how do people find you? How do people get in touch with you? Best place to get me is on Facebook uh, or and I use my same name on Facebook and Skype and on Instagram. And that's another pro tip I'll give you guys. Use your same name everywhere. I don't know why people on Instagram will be like red shirt one and this guy, his name is Jim Smith. You just can't even find him on Instagram. But yeah, Gerard Delaporta is my Facebook. Mm -hmm. Gerard Delaporta is my Skype. At Gerard Delaporta is my Telegram. <laughs> Gerard Delaporte is my Instagram, so I'm pretty easy to find if you can spell my name, which I'm sure you'll have that on there too. Yeah, of course, but you've reached your 5,000 Facebook friends, no? Yeah, I have. Um, I have, so then I opened the follow feature, and I looked to go to a business page, but there's just limitations with the business page. Unfortunately, um, if you, you know, request me on Facebook, you can follow me and we can still chat through there, but that's another problem. Zuckerberg created on me besides <laughs> my window art restrictions were restricted on 5,000 friends and it's all industry friends I mean I use Facebook for business I, I you know it's, and also to memorialize myself in my pictures because I, I thought I'd die at 30 and so now I'm still alive <laughs> so years. is there anything else you would like to share with our, with our viewers 
No, I hope this was informative and you know, I think you realize it's real talk and uh, I appreciate and thank you for doing this. I've never done any type of interview or, <laughs> or article and since we're good friends, I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, cool. I'll, th I'll thank you. Yeah, thank you also for, for sharing your wisdom and your life story with us. It's very motivating and uh, I'm sure we learned all a lot. I'm going to, I'm going to let's stop here for a second. Okay. Now we're back at the Glass office. So what I'm going to do is I'll provide a link to Market Hub, to Gerard De La Porta's Facebook under this video. Make sure you sign up to his newsletters. Make sure you, you find him on Facebook and I'm sure you will find a lot, a lot of useful business information on Market Hub. So thank you very much, Gerard. Thanks. It was a pleasure. Awesome. And uh, see you next time.